Big land mass hidden by the Sundering 10,000 years ago? Check. Main threat not revealed immediately? Check. Neutral and unexpected race with a team class? Check. Ratian playing a major role in the expansion? Check. It is no secret that over the years Blizzard has been kinda replicating their previous successes with most recently Shadowlands being similar to Wrath of the Lich King. However, a lot of people have noticed that Dragonfight literally seems like Mists of Pandaria 2.0. Alongside this, there are also a lot of similarities, but also a few differences. So, is Dragonfight really new Pandaria, and what could we expect from the new expansion? So. Let's be real, Blizzard kinda ran out of content already with Cataclysm as they already kinda started reaching a bit with Deathwing from the early Warcraft series and Mists of Pandaria ended up being just a completely brand new concept they literally expanded from just a random Pandarian mansion in Warcraft 3. This of course is not a bad thing, it is only logical, there really is only so much content you can extract from a relatively developed RTS series, however. A lot of people have noticed, and there is a pattern which I also can't deny, is that since Blizzard started losing players after Mists of Pandaria, they started trying to replicate their old successes. Now, WoW still has a pretty decent player base, but let's be real, there were 12 million subscribers during Wrath of the Lich King, which would be an insane number even for today's standards. So. Of course, it is natural that they would attempt to take some aspects that work and just fit it with new expansions in the future. There was a team with Legion being similar to the Burning Crusade thematically and Illidan being one of the major characters with the expansion continuing on his Burning Crusade storyline. Then. BFA could be teamed a bit with Classic as it focused on the faction conflict, although I'd say this is a loose fit, and it is undeniable that Shadowlands was heavily inspired by Wrath of the Lich King. The entire Shadowlands ordeal was just a continuation, and unfortunate continuation on what happened back in Northland. The Lich King, the Jailer behind the Lich King, Artis, Sylvanas, Undead, Scourge and all this stuff. Literally, it just seems like they decided to take the most successful era WoW and try to use the teams for the Shadowlands, although I think we can unfortunately all agree that they failed quite a bit in the execution of this. So now since they have been doing this, people notice that Dragonfight is in fact really similar to Mists of Pandaria. Personally, I'd say it is a bit of a mix with Cataclysm as well as there is a dragon, big dragons, the black dragon fight, Ratian, but since there is no big world revamp or any shattering or anything of the sort, it isn't really as much connected as it is to Mists of Pandaria, unless we get the infinite dragon fight then it would be even more. However, the signs of mob are just insane, literally it seems like we are going to Pandaria 10 years later. We are getting a brand new continent we knew literally nothing about that is gigantic and that was hidden by the Sundering 10,000 years ago and that essentially has their own little culture and ecosystem completely different from the rest of Azeroth. This is the biggest similarity, although there are a few differences. Pandaria was hidden by the Emperor to shield it from the Sundering 10,000 years ago by a mist, while Dragon Isles were hidden and seem to have been drained of energy for some reason around the same time. At the moment we don't really know how this happened exactly, but when you think about it, it is actually quite similar. From the announcement cinematic, the dragons decided to hide it from everyone, even themselves, which is similar to Pandaria, although the Pandaren and the others just remained on the continent, they didn't want to hide it from themselves. Now, the second similarity is that races live there that didn't live anywhere else on Azeroth, which was the case with the Genu and the Hosna, for example, even the Mogu, while on the Dragon Islands there seems to be some sort of primordial trolls, these Jardine, a bunch of dragon variations, and a whole bunch of other races. On the other hand, there are also races or their cousins that live on the continent that are similar to the ones we know. For example, the Sandar, the Tascar, and on Pandaria we had the Yongol that are literally just a different version of the Torrent. Now, aside from a major continent hidden by the Sundering, there are also other big similarities. First, just like in the midst of Pandaria, we're getting a pretty significant change of the talent system. Even more importantly, we are getting a completely brand new and unexpected race. To make the similarities even crazier, we are also getting a new class that is to 
thematically similar to this brand new just introduced race so just how we got the pandaren and the monks which are really just a pandaria thing we are getting the drag tier evokers that are entirely a dragon isle stink the only difference here is that the monks were available to a lot more races while the evokers will only be available to the drag tier which i'd say is quite a bit less content additionally this race just like the pandaren are neutral and is able to join both the alliance and the hold now from the story side the entire land is shrouded in mystery and it also has a bunch of mysterious energy present across the entire land in pandaria this was the old god stuff and the shah and on the dragon isles there is something we are yet to find out furthermore just like myths of pandaria the major threat of the expansion was not revealed at the start and it is something we will learn as we progress during the expansion this is a feature we are yet to explore as in pandaria Ganosh thematically had literally nothing to do with the new continent although Blizzard sort of spoiled it back then around the announcement that he would be a bad guy. This is not the same thing, but Dragonfight was just announced, so who knows, maybe they will spoil it as well. There have been leaks going around that the final boss will be related to Nosdormu and the infinite Dragonfight. Additionally, from the story perspective, the son of Deathwing, Ratian, played a major on the expansion and had the role of like a prophet pretty much just leading the entire storyline. In Dragonfight, it was confirmed that Ratian will be a major character yet again, and yeah, this is yet another big similarity. A few more things that are more from the meme side of things is that people see both expansions based on a children's movie and also both races are kinda cartoony looking and not received all that well. However, a lot of things are similar, there are also some that seem to be just completely different from the get-go. For example, Miss of Pandaria was heavily focused on faction conflict, while Blizzard confirmed that there won't be a faction war going on and that we are going to the Dragon Isles with just a completely different mindset from the start. More as explorers instead of what we did back in Pandaria and that is just plundering resources, battling each other non-stop and just destroying the land. Additionally, Miss of Pandaria offered quite a bit more unique content, at least with the announcement. For example, the class was available to more races and we got big changes like the pet battles which was a completely new system now of course it is still too early to say anything about dragonfight because i'm personally expecting they might announce a few more things soon and we don't really know how the expansion will play out from this perspective another difference is that in my opinion dragonfight seems to have a pretty decent response thus far it seems like most of the negativity is coming from people's bad experience with the previous two expansions and a lot of people are either like super hyped for dragonfight or are more neutral now now, if you have been following WoW for a long time, you might remember that Mists of Pandaria was really not received well at all. In fact, there were a ton of dislikes on the original announcement trailer. People were talking about Kung Fu Panda, how WoW is dead, how WoW is becoming a children's game and a lot of other things. However, Pandaria was sort of the opposite of the previous two expansions. It was very badly received at the start, but from this perspective, most people would agree that it was an excellent expansion and really, when you compare it with how much content there was it was like bfa and shadowlands combined now with dragonfight we can't know this at the start of course as it was just announced but let's be real blizzard doesn't really have that great of a check record lately especially with shadowlands that literally got you major content branches which is like half of what wow expansions used to get and there was some serious content out so while it is obvious that blizzard is heavily inspired by mr pedaria i wouldn't say this is a bad thing whatsoever mob had a lot of cool features and personally i would love to play an expansion like that again as for me it was a really cool time to play world of warcraft now i really hope from this perspective that it also has the same reception as mr pandaria later on and that it gets a bunch of content and the people overall see dragonfight in the same light as opposed to shadowlands which really was warlords of draenor 2.0 Thank you for watching, check out how all these will be combined with all the classes by clicking on the screen and check out the Runs Academy for videos on real world history. See you next time.